And we are here today on status hearings in each of these cases. Mr. Trout is president for the Department of Family and Protective Services uh, in each case. Ms. Zavala is president as the children's attorney and guardian ad litem in each case. Uh, Ms. Archer is present on behalf of Chantel Dean, who is the mother in each case. And Ms. Dean is also present. Um, and uh, Mr. Hill is present, um, although his client, Mr. Lewis, has not joined us yet, but we are reaching out trying to make contact with them. Um, and uh, Mr. Barfield is present on behalf of the father, Jordan Barnes, uh, who is also present with us today. Um, and, and Judge, just for the record, Morgan Tucker is my pharmacy specialist today on these three cases. Okay, great. All right. Um, we'll wait and see if Ms. Dean was able to make contact. The two cases where we've got everybody present, we'll kind of save to talk about Mr. Lewis till we get kind of get to that point. So um, what do we have new since the status reports were filed? Um, not a whole lot, Your Honor. We have... Um, the three older girls are getting um, dental. They're going to the dentist today. Um, and then the two younger ones went yesterday. Um, they're all doing really great in the placements. Um, they're having, um, mom and dad have provided clothes and shoes and diapers and um, necessities. And St. Francis has also helped with um, gift cards for the oldest three and um, some rainbow room help for the youngest two. Okay, so you're, part of the children you're talking about are Mr. Lewis's children. Oh yes. Okay. All right. Let's let's just let's just break it down. And if I know we're on YouTube, but let's use names. Okay. Of children because we've got so many kiddos. So okay. so let's just let's just take it. How, how's Kiana doing? Kiana's doing great. Um, she is wanting to get a job. Um, so we're going to help get documents for that. Um, and they have a dentist appointment. She has a dentist appointment today. Um, and other than that, we don't have any updates. Okay. She's placed with, with London Jordan. Okay. All right. Karma and charisma. I guess we will wait, Mr. Hill, or Ms. let me just ask, Ms. Dean, were you able to make any contact with them? Yeah, uh, well, I have to go get her because we can't, it says invalid address, so. It says Safari cannot open the page because the address is invalid. I'm, and I don't understand what, what that means. Because it won't do my phone like this. It won't come on. Okay. I don't understand what that means by the address. But Mr. Lewis is not present there with you, is he? Well, I'm trying to get the phone right now so I can run back across the street so I can give it to him. I'm trying to do it. It's not letting her load it from her end for some reason. It's saying the uh, email address is not valid. To the address, the address. Do you, have the, do you have the Zoom app on your phone? Uh, Yes. I think he got it on his tablet. I've done it before on my phone. We'll skip over talking about karma and charisma for a minute. So let's talk about case and chemistry. Um, chemistry went to the dentist yesterday. She had three cavities. She's going back on the 26th to, um, get those filled. And, um, she is also in a, going to be in a speech program, um, which will also allow her to, if Medicaid will cover it, um, will also allow her to attend, um, Amarillo ISD in a program that they have that um, specializes with speech. Um, I'm going to get more info on that because I don't have a lot. Which child are you talking about? Chemistry. Right. Okay. All right. We jumped from case to chemistry. Okay. All right. I asked about case. All right. Chemistry is oh, the one sorry. that I thought we're talking about a one year old. So, okay. No, no, chemistry. sorry. Chemistry. Okay. All right. Um, and she will either go full day or half day um, for um, for that speech program. And then Case also went to the dentist yesterday. Um, they said he needs to brush more. But other than that, because he's so young, um, they just told them to come back in six months. And um, Miss Durley is wanting to start potty training. So we're going to um, supply her with a potty chair for 
to assist with that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Then let's get a report on mom's progress. Um, mom has reached out to the therapist that um, I referred her to. However, they are out of town, so she hasn't had much luck. Um, she's been going to drug tests. She has been um, helping the kids out with clothes and um, all of the necessities. Um, so that's all that I have to report this far. Okay, she signed her service plan? Um, no, not yet. I haven't been there. I will see them this Friday to, set, have, to go over have, it in person. Have service plan's been filed? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Judge, they were filed on the 5th, it looks like. Okay. All right, and let's get an update on uh, Mr. Barnes. Um, Mr. Barnes tried contacting his therapist this weekend. However, it was the weekend, so he was unable to reach him. Um, he did leave a voicemail and tried contacting him yesterday. Um, I believe is what he, or he was going to reach out is what he told me yesterday. Um, he has also been going to drug tests. They are both going to one today. Um, and that's about it so far. Okay. Same there. Has he, has he signed a service plan or same thing? Same thing. I'm okay. going to go over it today or on Friday in person. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Hill, we're going to have to move forward. I'm sorry. Um, it might be helpful before our next hearing if y'all could set up kind of a test, a dry run with Zoom um, with with Mr. Lewis and his mom. Um, but but I, I, I she may still be present with us. I don't know. Um, I, I will do that, Judge. It's understandable. I apologize. I will make a note, Mr. Hill, that they they were attempting to be present and that that we just had technological problems. Well, maybe she's logged in now. Hang on. All right, let's talk about then. Let's get get an update with Karma and Charisma. Okay, um, Charisma just had a birthday, her thirteenth birthday, um, and so Mom was able to um, go to London's house and celebrate that with them. Um, and she is doing great at London's house. And then Karma has been, um, going to kids college at Amarillo college, um, where they do act different activities and art and, um, all of that stuff. And, um, oh, they're, uh, both Karma and Charisma are going to the dentist today. All right, then. And it looks like Mr. Lewis is present with us now. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Um, so with respect to Mr. Lewis, have we gone over his service plan or has he seen that? Um, I We've verbally talked about it. Um, I will show him that on Friday as well. Um, and he's complying with the service plans, um, just visiting and um, keeping in contact with me. Okay. Josh, I don't really have anything to add except that um, I'm having a little trouble contacting my client. If she could call me, I'm, I want to verify her email and phone number later today. Um, I have so she, email. That's how I've been getting a hold of you. That's how we'd be communicating, but it's still the okay. same email. I, I just want to make sure I've had trouble last day or two, so I didn't know if it changed. But do you no, have anything to add? No, ma'am. Okay. I think, Judge, we're pretty much just waiting on the service plan to go over that Friday. Okay. All right. Ms. Dean, that'll, that's going to have all these contact, you know, information for providers and all of that. So I appreciate y'all, you know, trying to get started on this. And, uh, <laughs> you know, with a holiday falling kind of in the middle of the week, last week was sort of a screwy week. So I think there were a lot of people that sort of took off a lot yes. of time last week. So, um, and I I have provided those, Judge. They just haven't signed them. Okay. All right. Okay. And um, Mr. Hill? Judge, I don't have anything to report. Obviously, uh, Mr. Lewis is, uh, you know, bedridden, and there's really not any services he can perform, and his service plan basically reflects that, that he just, you know, needs to participate with his kids to the best of his ability, and he, he's doing that. 
All right, and Mr. Burfield. Um, I don't have anything to report uh, uh, except uh, um, that my client, you know, just we just heard that he's supposed to sign his service plan Friday. We need to get that done. And it looks like he's trying to contact and get into his services going. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, I don't really have anything new to report. Mr. Barnes, do you have anything uh, that you need to say? Any comments, questions, concerns at this point? No, I don't have anything to say. I'm just at work. So I was just waiting for service plans and stuff like that. And ready to get going okay we'll get hopefully you all go through all those real carefully friday and we'll get that done and and um, again i appreciate y'all attempting to reach out and get some stuff started <clears throat> okay ms zavala your honor i've gotten to meet with all of the kids in person um in their in their placements um, starting with the three oldest, they're all doing well there i've got no concerns about them um, at ms shorten's house um, it might be that Kiana might have to retake some classes. I think that's still up in the air. Um, I think that Charisma had maybe one day of summer school, um, but the kids are doing really well. Now she's kind of falling into this weird pattern where she's not eligible for food stamps because they say she's getting money from foster care and she makes too much money. She's had to cut back on some hours to be there for the girls, and she's not actually getting any kinship assistance, or at least by when we talked. Um, so anything, I know that St. Francis has kinship workers, anything that they can do to assist would be quite helpful. Um, she may need to go back to food stamps and reapply, but they basically said, hey, you're getting all these benefits from these other places, but she's not. Um, and has had to cut back on hours. She's absolutely making it work. I've got no no concerns about the kids there at all, but any help we can give her would be would be helpful. Um, the the younger kids are with Miss Durley, and I got to see them last night and hear about their dentist appointments. And um, I do agree that chemistry really could benefit from from some speech, and it sounds like that is in the works. And I'm glad to hear it. Um, but they seem to be doing really well as as well, and they were headed off to Mr. Gaddy's. I've got no concerns about either placement. Okay, great. All right, then. Today, we are going to continue the department as temporary managing conservator and continue the children's placements. Let me talk to the parents about two service plans. So um, I'm going to make those plans in order of the court today. And so that means they're like any other court order. I, I do expect you to abide by those. And I expect you to work the services. Now, you all have have been very cooperative, so don't take what I'm getting ready to tell you as, you know, something that I'm disappointed or that I'm upset or anything. This is just, the, these are things I have to tell you at this point in time. So failure to work your services can result in the children not going home. And worst case scenario, it can, it can mean termination of your parental rights. So, you know, I don't have any indicators that that's the direction we're headed and we don't want to head that way. So, you know, if y'all need help with these service plans, reach out, let your permanency specialist know, let your lawyers know, you know, um, don't don't be afraid to ask for help if you're, you know, running into some brick walls and getting stuff set up. Um, but, you know, I do, it does require some initiative on your all's part to get these things going. So anyway, those are things I have to tell you. I have to make sure you understand that. And so from this point on, those are a court order. Okay, then I will see everybody back for our next hearing, November 7th of 2023. And that'll be on a nine o'clock docket. I, I don't know that your cases will be set right at nine, but your attorneys will make sure you know, you know, when you need to log in. And Ms. Dean, I appreciate your extra help this morning with trying to get Mr. Lewis logged in. So thank you very much. And, uh, okay. you know, everybody just take everybody's announcements. See what you need to do. Daniel, Trial for Protection Department of Family and Protective Services. And Mario Savala is my permanency specialist today. Just Teresa Ratliff for the mother, Shatasia Dean. I'm present. My client is also present by Zoom, and we're ready. Uh, Joel Jackson on behalf of the father, Dalvin Luck. He's the father of uh, Cambry and... Uh, uh, I'm present. My client is not available. He's just on a federal hold. Stacey Zavala on behalf of the kids. All right, then. What do we have new, Mr. Zavala, since the court report was filed? Um, well, Your Honor, the children are doing uh, very well. Uh, Maxwell, of course, is not living with his sisters. 
he's in an entirely different placement, about 20 miles away from each other. Um, but he's doing very well. Uh, they don't have any issues with him. Um, like as far as medical, anything like that, he's doing pretty well. Dentals, everything's up to date. Up to date. Uh, when it comes to Cambry, she's the second oldest child. Uh, she may be, or I'm sorry, she is required to get surgery on her um, on her belly button. Um, it does stick out pretty pretty far. Um, the doctor had said that um, it should have been taken care of when she was one, and she being she's seven now. So um, they just said that, that it or that it needs to be fixed. So um, that is what she. That's what they're going to be working on now. Um, and Callie, who was the baby, um, she's doing very well. She doesn't have any type of medical issues. Um, everything seems to be going very well with her as well. Um, uh, Shatasha has signed the uh, Family Plan of Services, and I know that she's about to start one of her courses uh, pretty soon. Um, the father, uh, Delvin, is still incarcerated. I spoke with him on the last day of june and uh he will he said that he's looking at probably another eight or nine months incarcerated he may stay where he's at or he may be moved somewhere else mr jackson is he at randall county right now yes ma'am they have him out there i tried to get a hold of him this morning uh he's in court this morning i guess on a, on a criminal matter but okay. yes ma'am he's currently at randall county okay all right. Okay, and we had any contact with uh, Mr. Wilson? He he's the deceased, Your Honor. Oh, okay. I, I apologize. I, I I forgot that. Yeah. All right. Okay. My apologies. Um, okay. Anything else from St. Francis this morning? Your Honor, um, we would ask, um, Ms. Brown was contacted by a uh, cousin of, I believe it's of Maxwell Wilson Sr., um, one by the name of Leah Henderson, um, that expressed maybe wanting to be a placement for the children. We do have a current home study running right now that we haven't gotten back, but um, we would ask if we could go ahead and run a expedited um, home study on Ms. Henderson, if you could order that. Okay, um, is this placement with the cousin, I mean, is that something that, that parents are on board with? Have they, have they been talked to about that? I, well, I, don't, oh. I think Ms. Brown may have spoken to Ms. Ratliff yesterday. I don't know if it's gotten to the mother yet. I'm not sure where we stand on that. I was just notified of it just then. When we were okay, so so let me ask this, Mr. Trout. So the home study that we've already been working on is on who? That is on, I believe, grandmothers. Or grandmothers. Is that right, Mario? Correct. There was, there was a home study denied on a Tiandra Wilson. It was just denied yes today. I mean, it was just filed today. Yeah. So I, that one's denied. There's one that's supposed to be pending on her mother. She had also given a name over a month ago of O.C. Smith. And and I don't believe they've looked into her. And and um, so I, I did provide that information again yesterday. And I was not able to speak with my client about Miss Henderson and what her position would be. And I don't know if she just wants Maxwell or all three children. Well, and I, I like to ask Miss Brown that I'm not exactly sure if she's looking at all three or just Maxwell Jr. Um, I think they. The issue, my understanding that I got just then, as far as they did mention OC to me, um, I think she works nights as a caregiver um, and she's in her 70s and has a disabled person that lives in the home with her. So we were asking for Miss Henderson just due to it looked like it may be a better situation um, just due to OCs, which she does, where she works. I'm sorry, Mr. Trapp. Ms. Dane, well, I'm going to give you a chance, but I'm, I'm just trying to get some information, okay? Yes, so I'm not ignoring you. I'm, I'm just trying to get some information. Yes, ma'am. So is Mr. Zavala, is, is Ms. Henderson interested in being placement for all three children? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And is she maternal, paternal cousin? 
Uh, she, she's per colonel of Maxwell Sr. is my Maxwell Wilson Sr., the, the deceased father, Your Honor. That's my understanding. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we've got a pending home study on the maternal grandmother. And mom has given some other names. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Ratliff. Um, well, with regard to Leah Henderson, I, again, haven't had a chance to talk to her about it. I think she was chomping at the bit to tell you something about that. Um, but other than that, Judge, uh, I ha did not get a chance to review my client's plan of service with her, although she did sign it with the worker. So um, I had attempted to do that before today's hearing, but wasn't able to. I looked it over. It looks appropriate. Um, and I can spend some time with her about that after the hearing today. Um, I'm glad to hear she's starting her services and she got a job. But because I wasn't able to speak with her, I don't know if she had any other updates to provide the board. Okay, so Ms. Dean, if you'll unmute and and let me ask you first, you seem you seem opposed to potential placement with Ms. Henderson. I don't know who that is. I don't know who y'all talking about at all. I haven't spoken with anybody. Nobody answers the phone for me. None of that. That's why. Um, that's why my lawyer doesn't know anything. She hasn't talked to me in like a month. I don't. I haven't talked to anybody. I've been pretty much representing myself. I'm done already with one of my courses. I took my rational behavior training course already, and um, I already started my therapy. I've already taken one therapy session. I'm not sure who Miss Henderson is. My aunt OC. She's not disabled at all. She. She's when I have my children. That's who help me with my kids. She. She still has other people's kids. She's fine. Okay, I think the issue is not that your aunt is disabled, is that there's a disabled individual that she takes care of in the home and that she works nights. Right, so, but I have, uh, we have a big family. Everyone is willing to watch, to help her watch the kids. She can get a babysitter. I have, we have a really big family. And everybody um, is willing to help her with it. That's, that shouldn't be the reason uh, for her home study not to go through. Yeah, I'm not sure, who is Miss Henderson? Okay, if, hang on. With respect to your aunt, then all I will tell you is, I mean, I'm willing to take a look at that. It just, it complicates things if, you know, when we've got a placement that's that's working at night. So then that, what that means is then we have to have a raft of other approved, you know, caregivers and, and people who are going to actually be, you know, getting the children where they need to be, school yes. or daycare or this. I, I'm, all I'm telling you is it just really... I know you have a big family. I know everybody's, you know, I, I get that, but it doesn't mean that they, they all have to pass background checks and they all have to meet certain criteria. And so it just, all I'm telling you is it, it greatly complicates that home study. Yes, ma'am. She said wow. that she was willing to quit her job to um, watch them. I've already spoken. We we talked about it. She said um, that that was one of the things, and she said that um, if the state was like you know willing to like you know work with her, that um, she was willing to um, quit working, like you know that she didn't mind uh, quitting her job to for, um, help with them, because she was um, kind of part time helping with me, like you know, because my I don't have either either of the fathers, so she was kind of the person that was part time helping with me while I had them as well. But she said that she was willing to um, to um, quit her job and uh, take care of them full time. Okay, Mr. Zavala, have you had any contact with her? Yes, Your Honor, and that is very true. She did say that uh, she was willing to uh, retire in order to take care of the children. Um, she had just, I just told her, don't quit your job just yet until we get to that point of us doing a, a home study on her. Okay. Well, my concern is that if Ms. Dean doesn't know who Leah Henderson is, then I'd have the children have a relationship with her. Who's Leah? And, and Judge, it's my understanding that Ms. Henderson reached out to Ms. Brown. Um, it wasn't somebody we found. She called them and, and spoke to them about it. So. so, Ms. Dean, my understanding is she was a cousin of Maxwell Wilson. Yeah, but I've never heard of a Leah Henderson. I, I understand. But she's reached out to the department saying she's related at least to one of the children. I mean, is it Hersha? Hersha Henderson? That's the only Henderson I know. I know of a Hersha, but I don't I've never heard of a Leah Henderson before ever. I would I would have to ask Ms. Brown if she mentioned that name or if she only called herself Leah. Um, okay, so let's do this. Okay. I would just like 
Mr. Zavala and Ms. Brown and Ms. Dean to, you know, talk and let's see if, and can we establish if there is a connection? Um, sure. You know, ideally it'd be wonderful to get the kids together. If, if the aunt is a possibility, then I'm, and the children obviously have a relationship with her if she's been a caregiver for the children. So to me, that's the logical first place to look if she's willing to make some of those significant changes to, to provide care for the children. But let's spend a time, enough time to figure out, is there any connection between Ms. Henderson and the children or and the mother? You know, if there isn't any, you know, I, I think it makes far greater sense to look to the aunt if she if she's truly willing to make some of those changes. So I'm I'm more interested probably in having a home study done on the aunt than I am on Ms. Henderson at this point. Not saying we may not end up doing one on Ms. Henderson, but I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm hesitant to do that when mom doesn't even know who we're talking about. Yes, ma'am. And, and Judge, can I ask, um, I don't know how far they are on the home study process on her mom. I mean, maybe everything will be solved with the home study on her mom, which is pending right now. And I don't know if they have any, idea at this point if there's any red flags in that home study at this point i just kind of like to get an update on that because it's sure. been a while Mr. Zavala? uh it just it was submitted judge uh we don't really hear a background on it they just kind of send us the emails <laughs> uh, with pictures and, and an update on what they saw and some concerns and that's so they've been out to the home from what i understand yes all right Okay, well, let's let it play out, and then, you know, let's just, uh, I guess then if that doesn't play out, then we, we start looking at at the end. Do you know about how, so y'all don't have any idea about how long it's been 60 days um, that they've had my children. I've been doing everything I'm supposed to, so y'all don't have any idea how long about, like, the home study or like an estimated time because my kids have been asking me when they're going to be able to see their family and it's been 60 days. Right. Mr. Savala, do we have any idea? When was it submitted? Uh, we had a worker uh, who submitted. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Would it be okay if I answered this question? Yes, I'm absolutely. sorry. Because um, I'm running really behind. So I need right, to no, I understand. Um, so we're only allowed to do one home study at a time unless you order us to do a second home study. So we started with Tiandra Wilson and then um, moved on to Cassandra Dean. I know that they've been out to her house. We just don't have it back. In, we hasn't been emailed back to us yet. I expect that it'll come fairly soon, like within the next probably week or two is my guess. Okay. And Judge, can I let you order the, the home study on O.C. Smith today? Uh, that that proceed it's before the one on Ms. I don't know how many they can do at once, but if... I know that they asked for the order on Leah Henderson, and I would ask the order be on O.C. Smith. I, I'll go ahead and order it. I mean, you know, it's the old thing. Home studies don't grow on trees, guys. I mean, they're, there's a, a cost to them. They're expensive. And, you know, I, I don't want to get so many going that, you know, that we're just wasting resources if we're close enough on knowing about grandmother. But but let's go ahead and get it. It does seem to be taking a long time. So I'll go ahead and order. We'll get started on the one on the ant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. But I'm not going to order one on Ms. Henderson today. Uh, okay. Mr. Jackson, anything to report today? Well, I had a question for Mr. Zavala. Uh, Back at the last hearing, I think that uh, Dalvin had provided a couple of uh, names of family members, uh, Tiandra Lucky, his sister, and uh, Anita Lucky, his mother. Have, have y'all spoken to either one of those people? No, um, only just because uh, I didn't speak to him until the 30th, and uh, he he just gave me one name, and that was that was the only name that he gave me in person. Okay, but this these were names that I'd ask about at the last hearing on May 24th. Um, I wasn't present at that hearing, sir. I gave I also gave those names um, at the 
very beginning. Those were one of the first. Those are like the first two names I gave. Sixty days ago, when the when they first took my children, and also um, my mom was there to actually get the children that day. So I don't understand why they didn't run her um, run a background on her that day. Okay, she was that, told that she would be able to get the children that day. Well, Miss Dean, I know the answer to that why it didn't happen that day, and and you know we we discussed that, and I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna go back over that again. So, um, okay. So, Mr. Jackson, anything? I mean, well, I mean, uh, Delvin, I think he'd expressed to me back in May that it's his desire also to keep all the kids together. And, uh, and of course, he provided family members' names uh, who I guess he believes are willing to take on the children. I asked that y'all would uh, keep those people, you know, in consideration. And then the last thing he'd ask about is, uh, uh, Mr. Lucky, he draws while he's incarcerated, and he wanted to be able to send pictures as drawings to the kids if the department didn't have a problem with that. Yeah, I don't see any problem. Those can go through Mr. Savala. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did speak that with him, uh, Mr. Jackson, that if he wanted to send letters or pictures for him just to send it to the address that was located on his family plan and that I would deliver them to his children. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was told that... Um, you did y'all did a background check on uh, Tiandra already? I thought that was the first person you did a background check on Tiandra Lucky on Dalvin's sister. My understanding is they did a home study on her. Is that correct, Mr. Zavala? There's just two Tiandras. There's there are two Tiandras. There's Tiandra Wilson. Lucky. Wilson that the home study was done on Tiandra Lucky is somebody else. That's the first name I provided was Tiandra Lucky, and uh, Mario told me that they did a, they already did a home study and stuff on her, and that um, she got denied. No, I did a background check, and she had uh, that were red flags that we had already we weren't going to do a home study since she already had red flags. Okay. All right, so that was considered and eliminated. Okay, so Mr. Zavala, do you have the names that Dad has provided at this point in time? I do, Your Honor. Um, I have his name in a book in my backpack, and I don't have it with me. But okay. um, it is one of his sisters that I believe. Oh. Yep. Okay. All right, Miss Zavala. Uh, Your Honor, the kids are doing very well. Um, they're both in, in good placements, of course. I'd love to see them with family and all together. Um, so hopefully one of these homestays will pan out. But they are are safe and well where they are. For the time being, while we're waiting. All right. Hopefully, get to, we'll I'm get sorry. To um, they keep saying that the kids are well and this and that. I've had to call the neglect line twice, and I haven't talked to anybody besides those people. I'm going to call them again because when um, at the beginning, this has been 60 days that they've had my children, and before Cambry went, she was already complaining that her teeth were hurting her, and um, I was told that she had already went to the dentist. They just took my baby to the dentist, so her teeth have been hurting her for 60 days. I'm going to call and make another. Um, I have open. Um, a open complaint with the um, the hotline, uh, the Texas Neglect Hotline, and I'm gonna uh, make another one here in a little bit. I have um, from when they refused to um, do my baby's hair. I had to argue with them for weeks to do my baby's hair. Her hair was matted to her head, and then now um, they're just now getting her to the dentist. Sixty days later, and she was already complaining about her teeth hurting her before she left. I've been pretty much having to do everything myself. Um, nobody's been, I've been having to, me and my mom have been having to reach out to everybody. I, we haven't had any help at all. I've been having to call complaint um, complaint lines and I'm just now getting um, information and stuff back. Well, I mean, th that's all fine and well. Um, you know, I find that these things generally go a little easier if we all try to work together, but um, do what you need to do. You can discuss that with Ms. Ratliff. Mr. Zavala, um, you know, was the was were the children's cans assessments completed timely? Um, Max was wasn't because he was out of town. But once he got back, it was done literally like two days later. Um, okay. And as some of the, so, uh, same thing with the girls. Um, from were what I know, they, the yeah, they, they were, yeah, the girls were done. Um, when she's talking about the dentist, um, we did have a little issue where they did tell me that they had the girls scheduled to go see the dentist. When they went to the dentist's office, the dentist refused to see the girls. 
because on their medical coverage, it said that they had no coverage. So they went to another dentist because they were just like, you can just look it up through a social. They did that again. The same dentist told them that they did not have any coverage. So uh, me and another team member talked about it and she fixed it like within 24 hours. Then they had to reschedule another dental visit. When I had talked to the child yesterday, I had asked her if her teeth were hurting and she told me that they were not. And I, she, I asked her if she could show me where her teeth were hurting at. She just pointed like, she told me, she's like, I have five cavities. That was it. And I said, do, do your teeth hurt? And she said, no. Okay, well, you know, if, if we've got appointments, that's all we can do at this point. I mean, it's, you know, whatever water is under the bridge. You know, Ms. Dean, I've heard about a lot of dental problems with not just your kids, but your sister's kids. And I mean, I've heard a whole lot about dental problems with these kids. And that did not happen just since these children were removed. You know, right. this, these are these are issues that have obviously been brewing for a while. So, you know, all I'm telling you is, you know, we're trying to get them addressed. OK. And we will see to it that they are addressed. But a lot of these things are things that sound to me like they should have been addressed a long time before we were involved. Right. And now that, that was the plan. She had just started telling me that her teeth were hurting. But when okay. um, at the beginning, they told me that she had already been to the dentist, which she had. All right. OK, then today I'm going to continue the department as temporary manager conservator. I'm going to continue the children's current placements. We'll look at these home studies that we've talked about um, and I'm going to order the service plans as an order of the court. So what that means is failure to work services can mean the children don't come home. Failure to work services could mean termination of your parental rights. Nobody wants that. So it's important to get your services worked. All right. Our next hearing will be November 7th of 2023 on a nine o'clock docket. And uh, Mr. Zavala, if you will, and Ms. Zavala, if you will, bird dog these medical appointments, make sure they get happy. They have it for our final today. Yes, We're conducting this okay. through Zoom Thank you under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. And we are live streaming and Ms. Taylor's making our record. We'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services and Amy Prater is my primacy specialist today. Vince Nowak on behalf of uh, Israel Renya. And I hate to be the fly in the ointment judge, but um, I... I don't object to the extension. I don't think given history, it's gonna make a difference with my client, uh, but I am here and I'm prepared. Thank you, Judge. Stacy Grant, on behalf of the mother, Adrian Martinez, my client is present. We are ready and in agreement with the proposed extension, Your Honor. Stacy Zabala on behalf of Xerxes. Um, I'm also in agreement on the extension. All right. Um... So, Mr. Trout, if you want to go ahead and outline what you think are the extraordinary circumstances that would warrant the extension, we'll take that up first. Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Martinez has been working her services. She got a late start due to um, believe it, incarceration at that time. But since she's been out, she's been working. Uh, she now has an apartment of her own. Um, I think she just moved in a couple of weeks ago. They were getting it, um, help, helping get it furnished. Um, and get, get her moved in and settled in. She still has a few services um, that she needs to complete. I believe she's done with most everything. There's just a few um, sessions that she has to finish up on some. Um, and Ms. Prater may be able to tell us a little more on exactly which ones they are. Um, but is to in order to work toward some reunification with mom, um, we need to make sure that she's settled and get these services finished so that before we move to that point. Okay, in my review, the court report was, uh, you know, the mom has made a significant amount of progress. She had completed a sober living program. Yes, she is in an aftercare type program through through that program, I believe. Uh, I also read that um, Ms. Martinez had left one of her jobs because there were coworkers there using uh, illegal drugs and. I, as much as I hate that for you, Ms. Martinez, I commend you for making a very proactive change. Um, so I also read that you're uh, advancing then at your other job and, and maybe made an assistant manager. So I'm, I'm obviously impressed with that progress. Uh, I know you've got a few things left to do, um, but 
all in all, I mean, things seem to be going very well. I think it is a question of just demonstrating some stability in your new home and making sure everything's ready for the kids. Um, you know, I also read, Mr. Novak, that dad had admitted to continuing use uh, not too long ago. Um, he admitted to last using on June 23rd of this year. Uh, so I would certainly think that there's nothing about this extension that is going to, um, you know, prejudice his position. Um, I would think he would want it. But uh, nevertheless, I, I'm not entertaining granting the extension based on anything that he has done since he's done very little. But um, I think that the request for the extension to continue to work with mom in the case is clearly in the children's best interest. And I think she's demonstrated those extraordinary circumstances. So I will grant the extension and we'll set a new dismissal date. Um, so Ms. Martinez, as long as everything continues to go really well and, and we get your home kind of established and set up and, you know, um, then, you know, we're on the right path. So this gives us time to do it. Um, Judge, I, I found that part I was looking for. At the time of the report, she had one parenting class and a couple of therapy sessions left to do for her services. So that's what we're working on. Right. But the, you know, the long term sobriety, Ms. Martinez, that you've demonstrated through the sober living program and that you're still working very hard to maintain, you know, is the most important thing, you know. And I probably had told you that from the beginning of this case that. It's that's the most important thing. And, you know, it's strange how along with that long term sobriety comes the stability, you know, comes a good job, comes a place to live, you know, comes transportation. I mean, it's it's just everything pivots off that that long term sobriety. So you're, you're doing great. I have nothing but words of encouragement for you. Just keep doing what you're doing. All right, we know what the new dismissal date will be. Uh, the drop dead date would be January 12th of 24th. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll do a quick review hearing. Um, so we stay in compliance with that. So anything new from the department since the court report was filed? Yes, Your Honor. Um, we were able to secure placement for Xerxes in his emergency respite home. Um, we will be doing official placement paperwork today. Okay. So that will be, that will be placement. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Um, we are going to um, schedule him for some therapy. Um, I spoke with a foster parents case manager about possibly doing that, and we're looking into it. Um, we are looking to um, grant mom two more hours a week for visits um, in her home, supervised at the moment, um, but we hope to transition to unsupervised soon. Okay, great. So we are in what I would call the ramp up phase. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, Ms. Grant. Your Honor, um, again, we're in agreement with the extension. She'll take as much visitation, obviously, as the court will allow. She's done excellent. She has completed the one parenting class, and we're only waiting on the um, two final sessions for therapy. She'll have those done very quickly, and so we're looking forward to ramping up. Mom does have a concern regarding potential report of one of the placements using spanking as a form of discipline. So we would request the department look into that and ensure that that's not occurring. Um, and other than that, that's mom's only concerns for today. And she's, we will obviously, once we get the services finalized, possibly file a motion for placement review and seek some court time at that point to make some further changes or try to agree perhaps with the department through Mr. Trout in advance of needing that. All right, and Mr. Novak. Judge, I, I have nothing other than to thank Amy uh, she's she's the person I get most of my information from. I I just I had contact with Mr. Renya once, and that was months and months and months ago. Um, proud of mom for doing well, uh, but I 
I think I've taken up enough time and I know you're running behind. Thank you, Judge. That's all I have. Okay, appreciate it. Ms. Zavala? Um, Your Honor, Xerxes is doing well. Um, that Those allegations are being checked on. Um, and um, he has been in this respite home that will now become his, his new placement. We've been in contact with them, getting good information from them. I feel good about that placement um, as we wait to transition to mom. And um, I'm impressed with the work that mom's done. Okay. Sounds like everybody's on board. So um, I will continue. The department is temporary manager conservator and continue Xerxes placement. Uh, that sounds like it's going to get approved. Um, that's good. And uh, like I said, we granted the extension, set the new dismissal date of January 12th of 2024. Uh, and um, I have no problems with the increased you know, time between children and mom, I think that's all good. And then I'll see everybody back for our next review hearing on November 7th of 2023. Uh, and then we do have the final scheduled January 9th of 2024. Ms. Martinez, those dates I know sound like a very long, long, long way away. Let me just make sure you understand. We may not have to be involved in an entire another six months, okay? So if things keep going well, we can get the kids back home. They're gonna wanna monitor a few months. If everything goes well, then, you know, we have no reason to stay in your life beyond when we need to. OK, so yes, it, it it could be six months if we need it, but it may not be. OK. All Judge, right. Judge, real quick. Um, can we get screens ordered today? Oh, mom, just to go ahead and get those done. Hair follow up when you like. Sure. We'll go ahead and get them, get those done. And and just so we stay on top of it. All right. Thank you all so much. Um, okay. We'll go ahead and take announcements and I'll see you back. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're present and ready, Your Honor. And as uh, Mr. Hill announced, I did receive a signature from him yesterday as far as mom. Uh, dad is incarcerated um, in a TDCJ unit um, right now. So we have not been able to get a signature or agreement from him. Judge, uh, Mr. Trout is. Uh, Correct. My client has uh, waived her right to be present at the hearing. We're not contesting. She realizes she needs some help and she's willing to uh, work with the department and get the help she needs. Okay. And she's not present today. She's declined to attend. Okay. All right, then, uh, Ms. Zavala, do you want to go ahead and announce? Stacey Zavala on behalf of the child here and ready. All right, then, Mr. Trout. One witness, two witnesses. What do we have today? We'll, we call Ms. Braden just to, I guess, take some quick testimony as far as. And how are you familiar with that case? I'm the investigator assigned to the case. And you are employed by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. And you're you're a super uh, investigator. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, how did you become involved in this case with this child? I was notified by my supervisor that there was that law enforcement was requesting immediate assistance um, okay. to respond to the motel. OK. And what was what was the issue at the motel? Uh, the mother had been found with um, drug paraphernalia and there were concerns regarding the conditions of the room. And mom had admitted to law enforcement that she had been using while the child was present. OK. Um, were you able to get there and meet with the mom? Yes, I was. Um, and did mom admit any of that to you? Or yeah, it? she admitted all of that to me. Okay. Um, and so a decision was made to, to remove the child due to safety concerns and possible exposure to harmful illegal drugs. That's correct. Um, during your conversations with mom, did she tell you who dad was? Yes. Yes. Okay. She identified him as Danny Tidwell Jr. Okay. Did she state whether he was around or involved with the child or she stated that he did not have any contact with the child and was a registered sex offender. Okay. Um, have you been able to find Mr. Uh, Tidwell? Yes, I have. Um, where is he currently? He's currently in the NIE unit in TDCJ. Okay. Uh, do you know how long he's going to be there? Have you found any of that out? His projected release isn't until the middle of 2024. Okay. Um, have you been able to speak to him? I have not been able to have direct contact with him. I've mailed him all of the paperwork and I've tried getting in contact with him by phone, but my attempts have been unsuccessful. Okay. Um, is that 
you calling the prison, but they have not been able to get him to the phone? That's correct. Um, do you know, and you may not know this, but is it due to him not wanting to speak to you or is it due to they just won't bring him in? No, I'm having issues. It just, the phone call, it just keeps ringing and ringing and ringing. And so I'm not sure. I just haven't, I haven't been able to make contact. Okay. All right. Um, have you received any response to the, the mail that you have sent him? No, I have not. Do you know, did you send it certified? Do you know if it got delivered to him or you sent it and just haven't heard anything back? I, I just sent it and I haven't heard anything back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and where is the, um, where is the child placed? The child is currently in foster care. Okay. Uh, is it local foster care? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, is mom getting, do you know, is she getting any sort of visitations, uh, whether it's, um, phone call, FaceTime, pers in person? Yes, yeah, she is getting visitation. Okay. Is that once a week? It should be, I believe. Okay. Um, do you believe that um, the removal of the child is necessary? Yes, I do. Uh, do you believe it's in the best interest of the child? Yes, I do. Is that to prevent any possible further exposure? That's correct. And you could not safely place um, with dad due to his incarceration? That's correct. Um, did have you gotten any family members or has mom given you any names of anybody that she wants looked at? Yes, yeah, she gave me a maternal aunt. Okay. And has that been initiated? Um, that hasn't been initiated because the mother was supposed to be staying with her nephew after she was released from jail. Um, she ended up staying with maternal aunt. And so the family was advised that a home study would not be conducted until the mother was no longer living there. Okay. So just to clarify that the name that she gave you wanted a home study on is the same person she moved into with when she was okay. Um, and is she still living with that aunt at this time that you know of? Um, I haven't heard any differently. Okay. All right. Um, but you do believe that the removal was in the best interest of the child. I do. I'll pass the witness, Yarn. All right, and Mr. Hill. Uh thank you, Judge. Uh ma'am, is uh if uh, Ms. Long moves out or finds alternative uh, living arrangements, is the department willing to consider the maternal aunt uh, for placement? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Ms. Brader, you're, when, when you said you, the phone is ringing and ringing, are you, you're calling a TDC unit? Yeah, so I made contact with them on the Monday before the 4th of July, and they said, you're going to have to call back after the holiday. And so I've called back after the holiday several times, and just nobody's answered. And so I don't know if I need to try a different number. Um, I just haven't been successful getting a hold of them. What unit is he in? The NIE unit. Okay. Judge, I can verify that sometimes you call TDCJ and you don't get anybody to answer the phone. I find that in my criminal practice with regularity. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. <laughs> Completely believe it. I remember I remember making those phone calls. Um, okay. I know I think at the time of removal, we, we talked to the aunt. This is Ms. Rossiter, correct? Yes. Okay. That's correct. I know that y'all spoke with her and that she worked nights and child care was going to be an issue and um are, are those going to be issues with the home study or i mean no the day that all of that was kind of happening the aunt was doing everything she could to be placement um she's i believe she's already switched to days um okay. she wants to she's already contacted daycares about getting daycare set up for him she's been very proactive um okay. and we want to place with her we just can't with mom being there right i understand Okay. And did we ever even do a background check on her? Just a, a Yes, I did. Like CPS background check and criminal history and nothing came up of concern. So we have pretty good reason to believe that that would be an approved home study. Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mr. Hill, um, and you may or may not know the answers to this, but I mean, you know, we don't want mom being homeless, obviously that's, it's not, a, but do we possibly have some options you think? Judge, I, I don't know. I'll have to get back in touch with her and, and I know I've had this conversation with her, but I'll have to get back in touch with her and talk to her and find out if she does have any other options. I, I just don't have the answer for that one. Okay. Judge, I did speak with her 
I did speak with her about um, going to like a treatment facility. Um, she's open to doing that. And she's also open to going to the shelters. Um, I spoke with her in depth about downtown women's center. And so okay. I think she has those options and she was open to exploring them. Okay. That would be the best of all worlds. Okay. Yeah. So Ms. Braden, let me ask, have we done any drug testing on her or any more recent drug testing? Yes. Um, so she went for a UA um, and a hair screen on June 27th, I believe, or maybe it was June 20th. It was June 28th. Um, she went to go drug screen for me. Her UA returned positive. Um, and then I haven't received the hair follicle results just yet. High or low level on the UA? High. And Ms. Brayden, do you know why she didn't go move in with nephew? Did she I don't know. Um, mom's phone went out for a little bit. Um, and so I didn't have a way of contacting her. She just contacted me, um, I think the day before yesterday, um, and told me that she got a new phone number. And so I haven't had a chance to follow up with her on that. Ms. Long has a new phone number? Yes, which you may have spoken with her since she changed her phone number. Um, I, I'm not sure I have. Would you mind? Would you mind? Uh, 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 yeah. What do you, what is it? Just chat thing? Could you chat me the, yeah. the phone okay, number? I can send the number to you. So my, my question about drug testing, and this is probably going to come up with Ms. Zavala's recommendation. You know, my concern is about, you know, we're still talking about a pretty young child. The, the drug we're dealing with here is methamphetamine. But mom's having visits and, I, you know, I, I really don't want to take those away from mom, particularly if she will be willing to, you know, go into a treatment program, obviously. But I do have some just, you know, basic safety concerns about if she's still using and that those are at high levels about her having lots of contact with the child, physical contact. Ms. Zavala, is that a concern of yours? It is, Your Honor. And um, Liam is three years old, nonverbal, has some sensory issues, sure looks like he really needs to be evaluated for autism. Um, I know he was at a doctor's appointment very recently, maybe as recently as yesterday. Um, and the doctor had wanted, I believe, a, a drug test on Liam, a, a hair follicle. I think because of the way the um, contracting is, when when placement took Liam, that test was not done because there wasn't a request there. Um, I would say if the doctor is asking for it, I would ask for an order for, for Liam to be hair follicle. Um, and, and I do have some real concerns. It's my understanding that the officers that responded both had to seek medical treatment and Liam was right there in the room, not just visiting shortly. Um, so, so I really share the concerns about exposure for him. Yeah, all of which is, you know, part of my concern. Um, Ms. Braden, has he has he been tested or can we get that done just so we know? Yes. Yeah, so there's been some issues with switching over to the superior foster care Medicaid. For some reason, I've tried following up on it. Um, so they just took him yesterday to try to get the hair follicle done and were denied. And so we're I've already followed up on that again this morning to see what we can do about that. We did go ahead and do a UA on him the day of removal just because of the concern of exposure. Um, and that did come back negative. Good. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we're okay. Where are mom's visits happening right now? I do not know the answer to that question. Um, St. Francis would know the answer. Mr. Koval, are those happening at St. Francis? Um, the three-day visit did happen at St. Francis' office. Uh, that's the only visit so far. I'm setting up another one for this week at the St. Francis office. Okay. I will permit that visit to go forward, but mom is to be masked. And I think gloves would be appropriate. So let's minimize any skin to skin contact. Yeah, I want to encourage, you know, Mr. Hill, my point is I, I want to encourage mom to, to go into treatment. I mean, I'm encouraged that she agreed and she says she wants the help and 
you know, we, we just kind of want to see that happen. And then the child could obviously, it sounds like could pretty easily be placed with the aunt. Um, and, and she's here locally. That would be great. So mom would be able to maintain contact. Um, but until we get a negative UA on mom, I, I, I think masked and gloved is appropriate. I hate that, but Ms. Zavala, are you good with that? I am, Your Honor. I don't, I don't want to discourage her, Mr. Hill, I, but I'm not willing to, you know, continue that at the risk of the child's safety. So, yes, ma'am. Just you can stress to her how important it is that we be working towards a negative UA, and that means obviously no further use. And if she's going to need to go into treatment for help with that, then that's what she needs to do. Yes, ma'am. All right, um, Mr. Trout, any further witnesses? Uh, no further. I was going to ask Ms. Braden. You said the last drug screen was on was about two weeks ago. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I would I would ask Judge that we go ahead and um, do another UA at least on her to see if that levels come down since it was pretty high. Fair enough. I think that's reasonable. So just a UA. Obviously, we don't need to do another hair, but just the yes, UA. We're still waiting on that hair, so we'll just yeah. ask for you. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Hill, anything to present today? No, yeah, ma'am. All right, Ms. Zavala. Nothing to present. Do you have a recommendation today? Yes, Your Honor. It is my recommendation that uh, Liam remain in the temporary managing conservatorship of the department at this time. I do believe that's in his best interest. All right, I will find at this time that the evidence is sufficient to name the department as temporary managing conservator based on an ongoing and continuing danger to the health and safety and welfare of the child. Uh, I also find that the child could not be safely returned to either parent at this time uh, and that that would present a continuing danger to the child to be with mom due to drug use and in our drug test results. Uh, father, obviously, the child could not be placed with him as he's incarcerated. Um, I'll order the UA on mom for her to do that today. And I'm going to condition and say mom can have her next visit as long as she's masked and gloved. And I would want that to continue until we get a negative UA, but but I'm going to go a step further. If her, if the UA we're asking her to do right now is higher than the prior one, then I'm going to stop the visits until mom really actively gets into treatment. So we'll go forward with this next visit, and we'll see what the what the next UA says, and to, and to determine whether we're going to move forward. And, and again, Mr. Hill, you can you can just explain to her, you know, this isn't I'm not trying to punish her. I'm just it's a it's an issue about the child safety. And and I really want her to have. You know, some motivation and encouragement to go to treatment. But yes, ma'am. But, but that's not why I would stop the visits. I just I wanted to understand that. OK, um, our status hearing will be August 24th. Of 2023, and that's a nine o'clock docket. So I'll see everybody back then. And uh, Ms. Trail, I wish her good luck. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I did. Mother's right, one. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, and so that the court can review it. I don't know if you've reviewed it already, but um, it has been, it was e filed May 23rd. I didn't know if you wanted to take a moment to review it before we started. Well, based on our prior hearing discussion, I did review it. So okay. I have read it in the stone. All right. And my only today is yeah, and my only witness today, Judge, is gonna be Miss Morris and my client is present. Okay. Is your client present? She is not present, Judge. I haven't had recent contact with her, but um, this was her request initially that she made to me when I requested the home study. So I felt I needed to proceed with the hearing. Okay. Um, all right, well, let's call the case and then we'll talk about where we're going from there. Uh, we are here today on a motion for placement <clears throat> at mother's request. Uh, we are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and take announcements first. Daniel Trial for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, President Radio. 
Judge Teresa Ratliff for the mother, Ashley Alvarez. I am present. My client is not present. Um, however, she did make this request uh, early on and the home study has been conducted. So I'm presenting this on her behalf today. Stacey Zavala on behalf of Mia. Ms. Ratliff, this is your motion, obviously. So I'm gonna allow you to go first. Let, let me just ask, you know, ask you all, I'll tell you what, let me just have a bench conference with the attorneys. You guys all put yourselves back in one and I will join you in there. Thank you all for being patient. Um, okay, so I have, I have reviewed the home study front to back and, and I'll tell you guys exactly what I told the attorneys. I literally have read it, stem to stern. Um, you know, this isn't a deal where I jumped to the back page and read what the positives and what the negatives are or anything. So I've gone through it with a pretty fine tooth comb. And, and in doing so, um, I, I made a lot of notes about it. And so what I'd like to do is just kind of tell everybody where, where I stand on it at this point in time. Um, so I know that the department has denied it. I know that, and I, and I understand the reasons they have certain policies, Ms. Morris, that, you know, no matter how good things may be right now, there are certain things that are a bar to, to them approving a home study. So your, your criminal history, your life history prior to 2015, I will just tell you, it's not a factor to me. I, you've turned your life around. It, it appears to me you've done so very successfully. Thank you. I believe, I believe in second chances. I am very familiar with the program that you went through with Evelyn Rivers. Um, have a lot of confidence in that. And obviously it has helped change your life for the better. So, you know, your references were more excellent. Um, but here are my concerns. So I just want you to know, and, and I want the department to know. Okay. Not worried about the criminal history, not worried about your CPS history. I, I think that's those are bygones, and 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 I'm I'm not focused on that. Um, my concerns are that there are five other children in the home, ages 14 to four, and now this would be adding a baby into the mix. Yes, um, you're a single parent and a grandmother, and you know. And thank you for stepping up for your grandchild. I don't know what all those circumstances are, but, you know, thank you for stepping up. I'm concerned that your finances may be really tight. Um, but even that, I think, is doable and workable okay. for, for the interim and on a short-term basis. Um, your vehicle accommodates, you know, that many children. Mm -hmm. The reports are that your children are very, and your grandchild are very, very bonded to you. They're very close to you. They obviously look at you as their safe person. And, and it's obvious you're providing well for them. And, you know, they're, they're fed and clothed and happy. And, you know, it's a functioning household and, and all of that. I'm not concerned about the padding on the trampoline because I don't think the baby's going to be on the trampoline. But, you know, let's just say not a good idea for the baby to be on the trampoline. Um, so I, I don't see anything else that, that indicates there are safety risks in your home. So I'm, I'm not concerned about that. Okay. Um, my concern is that you're not going to qualify for any subsidy because of those other things. Unfortunately, those are a bar to getting you any kind of financial assistance. And there's nothing I can do to override that or change that. Um, my concern is whether or not this is a viable and will, will be viable or a successful long-term placement mm -hmm. for the baby. And, and let me explain to you what I mean by that. Okay. If, if mom and dad were actively engaged in their services right now and making some progress, I would probably place the baby with you today. Yes, ma'am. Because I would, because it would be a, the appearance to, would be then that this is probably you know a maybe eight nine month deal, maybe a year long commitment that you're making, and and I think you could do it. 
I, I think you do it beautifully. And, and so when I talk about short-term interim, that's kind of what I'm talking about. But here's the problem is mom and dad so far have not made that kind of progress. And so I have to begin, I mean, it's still early in this case, but I always have to look at the possibility that placement of a child, not just this child, but any child in care, you know, may end up being a long-term placement. Yes, ma'am. And by that, we mean, you know, potentially adoptive placement. Mm -hmm. And so my concerns are you being a single parent with five other children to support and take care of. Is it really going to be feasible for you to be long-term placement of this child without the financial assistance through the department? And that goes beyond, I mean, that goes into the adoption phase of children who are in foster care. So, you know, doing an, a, a private adoption is very expensive. You know, I don't see that in your budget, you know, from looking at the home study right now. And, and, and I don't, you know, please don't take that, that I'm, I'm making some negative comment. I'm just, this is just all the things that, that I have to consider as the decision maker, you know, for the child. So kind of what I would like to do today. So, all right. First of all, dad has been, you know, we did genetic testing and so he, he's going to be found to be the dad. Okay. I'm not going to do that today because we didn't have that on the slate for today. And in fairness, he should kind of know that's going to happen, but, okay. but we have another hearing in August. And okay. so I can, I can do that in August and adjudicate him as the dad at that point in time. And then at that point in time, then I can order him to pay some child support. Yes. Same at all. I could order her to pay child support now. Yes. I don't know if anybody's even working right now. I don't so, know, ma'am. You know, I could order it, but if they're not working, you know, nothing from nothing is still nothing. So, yes, ma'am. You know, um, if I thought parents were working their services and I thought they could help you financially, I would feel a whole lot better about this. And, um, but. But that's my concern is long term and whether or not this would be a successful long term placement. Mm -hmm. Because we just we just haven't seen that kind of progress yet. So what I'd like to do is just sort of table the whole thing. My understanding is maybe dad has kind of recently reached out and maybe talked about starting some services and this cook's nodding up and down. So is that kind of is that correct? Yes. Yeah. He is um, going to sign his family plan, start services. He should be go drug testing today. So he's getting on the ball. Okay. Have you had any contact with mom recently? I haven't been able to contact her since March 28th. Okay. Okay. So maybe we've got one parent who's going to kind of get on board. And so what I want to do is let's, let's see where we are August 22nd. That's our next hearing date. Let's see if dad is really, if he's gotten engaged, we'll see if dad is working. And then, you know, we'll take another look at this. And it's something that we can take a look at as we move along. Okay. Um, the child is in a really good placement right now. And I am more than happy for you to have, you know, visitation and okay. contact you and or your kids, you know, I mean, your family. So. I'm going to want Ms. Cook and you and everybody to get your heads together about that so that you can have some, I would say, you know, whatever, would it be feasible, Ms. Zavala? I mean, what, every couple of weeks, maybe? Sure. I, I am for whatever works. Um, placement is a little bit out, out of town, so yeah. there are some logistics, um, but but I've got no objections to, to regular visitation. You know, it's just making the logistics work. Right. So, and that's why I said maybe every two weeks because of, because of the, dis, you know, Ms. Morris, we hate, you know, we hate to just run placements legs off. I mean, you know, they're, yes, ma'am. so, and I don't, I don't remember if they've got other kids in the home and how many and all, you know, so they okay. obviously have commitments, but, um, but maybe if we could work that out where like every couple of weeks, Ms. Yes. Morris could have some time with the baby and she and or her kiddos. Um, so we maintain that bond. Okay. 
you know, and because I'm not saying that we're not going to place with you. I mean, it still could happen. So, <clears throat> um, you know, let's just keep a good thing going. Yes, ma'am. Um, would those visits need to be would, the, would those visits need to be supervised, or would she be able to like? I mean, you said there wasn't any safety concerns with her. Obviously, she. I, I will say this too: she's willing to drug test. Um, yeah. Do what she needs to do. Um, so, I just wanted to ask about the supervision. Ms. Zavala, what's your? Do you have an opinion I, or? A, I've been in the home and I've met with Ms. Morris and I've got no safety concerns. I don't, I don't see anything that I would point to that says they would have to be supervised. Um, I've got no, no heartburn with unsupervised visits. Okay. Good. I've seen Ms. Collins is taking her microphone off. She may yeah, could we possibly let, Mia is not going to remember Ms. Morris. So can we do a couple of them where someone is either the foster parents or Tori? Um, because Mia is not, I mean, the little girl's not going to remember Ms. Morris. Um. She, she that's fine um the foster parents for Tori it doesn't mind it doesn't matter but uh, hopefully she can establish some rapport with the foster parents because even if this doesn't happen I know she wants to be part of this child's life yeah I I mean I think probably at least it, it makes sense to you know just make sure that the child's got a you know I mean it just has some comfort level I mean obviously but <clears throat> you know I I think that's fine if we do one or two visits and where there's somebody else around. And then after that, then I'm, I'm fine. If, if the child goes with Ms. Morris, as long as, you know, as long as you got a car seat or, you know, whatever we're going to do. Um, because obviously if I'm still considering you as placement, I don't have a concern about your access being supervised. So we can do a few, whatever you want to call it, supervised, but mainly just just have either, either placement would hang around for, you know, a bit to make sure we're all good. Okay. Whatever we come up with. And just, and I kind of know it's sort of a nice starter on it, but as far as Mr. Howard, just make sure that he's not around when she has the child. Um, we, we need that put in also. And Judge, I was going to address that as well. Um, you know, it's stated over and over in the home study that he's her romantic partner or something to that effect. He is not. He's the father of her youngest child. He comes to pick up his daughter and leaves. But the other kids do know him and she, they're friends. But anyway, she'll sign up the safety plan. Yes. But he will not be present. It's not, it's a non-issue. Okay. Um, okay. So that's, I mean, honestly, that's what I'd really like to do today. And I, I mean, I, I just... I'm just not ready to pull that trigger, but but I just want you to know what I'm concerned about and what I'm not concerned about. I just think that's fair. So that's right. um, anyway, so we will keep looking at this. It's fluid, you know, and uh, then we can get some kind of access started and then we'll see what happens August 22nd. Um, Ms. Cook, if you're in contact with dad, encourage him to fill out the paperwork to get a court appointed attorney. So, and it would be better if we can get somebody on board, you know, in advance of that next hearing, you know, I just think that's, I think that'd be helpful to everybody. So, you know, I don't know whether he'll qualify or not, but, you know, I certainly want to at least look at it. And so, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Anybody have anything? Else they want to cover today. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. All right, so, then. If I can yeah. have a chat room with Miss Morris after the, the hearing, sure. be I'll be happy to. I'm going Thank to leave you. the feed up. We've got another. We've got another hearing at one, so I'm just going to leave it up anyway. Um, so, Miss Morris, thank. I mean, I mean, I just want to say thank you for stepping up, opening up your home, opening your life up to the scrutiny that is involved in one of these home studies. I know it's extensive and, you know, it's, it's putting yourself under the microscope and, and, you know, I appreciate the fact that you've been willing to do this. And so yeah. um, just, just understand that it's, you're in the hip pocket. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Thank we you. We're here today. Mm -hmm. Seven, yeah, um, too, and I guess this is actually. To resume from a previous. Call. Yeah, yeah, we're resuming from. Uh, looking may 25th yes ma'am 2023 and so we are here to continue our final 
um, that we began on that day. Um, we are still doing this through the Zoom program under a finding of good cause and consent and agreement of the parties. And we are also live streaming and Ms. Taylor is still making our record. Okay, let's, we'll go ahead and take announcements since we're here on a different day. Daniel Trial for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're present ready on. Stacey Grant on behalf of the mother, Jasmine Prado, my client's present and we're ready, Judge. Stacey Zavala on behalf of Nico, here and ready. No, Garrett with Costa. All right. Thank you all. And your honor, that Mr. Fernandez is here and he's not represented by attorney, but he is also present. Definitely. Okay. And I, I have shown that he is present. And Mr. Fernandez, are you you uh, are ready to proceed today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. And my notes reflect that back on May 25th, neither parent was present, uh, but they are both today. So, okay, let's see where we were at. Um, we called and recessed the case because uh, we needed to have mom brought in, I think. Yes, yes ma'am. Am I remembering that correctly? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Judge. All right. Okay, Mr. Trout, then you could recall your witness. Well, in your honor, we, I believe, uh, since we have recessed after speaking to Ms. Grant and Mr. Fernandez today, uh, we have an announcement. Um, I believe we don't have an agreement, so we won't have to go through the hearing. Your volume just went. Ooh. I can barely hear you. <clears throat> can you hear me better now? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, since we got recessed, I, we spoke to Ms. Grant this morning, and uh, I spoke to Mr. Fernandez just a few minutes ago. Um, we will have, can announce an agreement um on this case okay great and i can't remember who i had on the stand if amy can tell me if i had miss tucker if i had uh miss grant i can't remember who i put on the stand last time uh see if i had a note it wasn't mel i okay. didn't testify yet so <laughs> I, was, I, I thought it was shay grant that i put on just to get to some on the on the record before we recessed yes uh, and if that's the case, Your Honor, since Mel's not on uh, the stand right now and we are going to announce an agreement, um, I'm good releasing her. We're okay with that. So she doesn't have to support me. There's no agreement. No objection to that. No objection. All right. Thank you. All All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. She is so fast on that button. <laughs> She's she quick on it. <laughs> Just in case somebody changes their mind. <laughs> All right then. Who do we want to who do we want to swear in today? Well, Your Honor, if you would like, I would I would announce um, what we've kind of agreed to. Or, okay, that would be uh, helpful. Sure. Okay. Um, so as far as both parents, um, similar to what we did in the in the sibling case, um, we would do a permanent managing conservatorship to the great grandparents who are actually placement at this time. Um, Carmen, Vian, and um, Alfredo. They would be the permanent managing conservators. Um, both parents would have um, possessory conservatorship. Um, we would do child support at minimum wage on each parent and $50 medical support, um, which is what we did in the other case. Um, visitations would be supervised by the great uh, grandmother or grandparents um, or a designee of the great grandparents um, in a public place outside the home. Um, grand Placement or PMC would have the right to request drug screens uh, before visits, uh, UA at any time before any visit, and hair follicle every 90 days um, at the cost of the parents. If the drug screens are positive, then that, that visit would be vacated until clean screens. Um, if the place of visits or the time of visits cannot be agreed upon, uh, they can have supervised visits at family support at the cost to the parents, whichever parent is asking for the visit um, and 48 hour notice of intent to visit to exercise visitations. Daniel, are you going to put the duration in, of those visits in the order? Would those be two hours? Um, what did we, I think we did. 
can't remember. Did we do minimum of one hour at the lab on Dante's and they can work out? Yeah, Dante's is minimum of one hour yeah. if it requires supervision from family support. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I, I would say that again, but um, okay. just a minimum of one hour. Thanks. Let me make sure I have great grandparents' names correct. Carmen yeah. and Alfredo. I'd say I'm Miss uh, Carmen, I believe, is, as we said on the screen. Um, they also did sign a intent to become permanent managing conservative, which was filed um, in May on May 24th, um, of both with both great grandparents' signatures on that. Is this you and your client's agreement? It is our agreement, Judge. I would just like to ask my client, Jasmine Prado, to verbalize on the record that this is also her agreement and understanding. Ms. Prado, if you'll unmute for me. Yes, Judge, I agree to that. Okay. And Mr. Fernandez, if you can unmute. Yes, ma'am, I agree to that. All right. And Ms. Zavala? I do agree to that, and I do believe it's in his best interest. All right. Any further recommendation, Ms. Zavala? No, Your Honor, just that the order be entered as agreed. Okay. All right. And Ms. Garrett with CASA. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, CASA agrees with this agreement and um, for child support and everything to be ordered. Okay. All right, then. Um, Judge, if we want to, uh, do we need to put um, child support starts August 1st? Yeah, I was going to ask you when you did want that to start. Yes, I'd, I'd say August 1st, Your Honor. I'll give them about three weeks to get set for that. Daniel, would you be opposed to putting September 1st in the order as my client was just released from um, handling some issues she had with Randall County and getting that behind her? And she's got to start a new job. And sometimes the paychecks run two weeks after you start. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that just then. Thank you. It would just, I just don't want to start her behind the eight ball. Okay, then. Um, I will find that the parties have agreed and that it is in the best interest of the child to name Carmen and Alfredo as the permanent managing conservators of the child. I'll name both parents as possessory conservators or the child support at minimum wage beginning September 1st of 2023. And each will pay an additional $50 medical support beginning on the same date. Um, and visitation will be supervised by the permanent managing conservators or their designee, uh, essentially as announced, and, uh, they will have the right to request the drug testing as announced, um, uh, and, uh, visits will be affected, uh, as it's been agreed to today by any positive results. Uh, and I will approve the uh, agreement that parents will give a 48-hour notice of their intent to visit. Um, then I will wait till you all present an order and I'll sign it. And then at that time, the Department of Family and Protective Services will be dismissed, uh, as well as all court-appointed attorneys, CASA, and, of course, Ms. Zavala. Okay. I appreciate you all working it out. And uh, good luck to everybody. Hope this goes well and hope that everybody will continue to make progress. Thank you. Anne. Okay. Thank you, All right. Appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.